does good. If it doesn't, uh, I'll apologize later. So anyway, this is a shofar, and I, um, I've been practicing at home for Mary, bless her heart. She's uh, I've been a good sport, and the puppies did not like it, so we'll see. Sunday job to become a, a shofar player, but anyway, you kind of get the idea. Um, it's about uh, it's about praising, it's about rejoicing, uh, and who knows, maybe that might be like the sound of the trumpet that we hear one day. So, um, thank you for hearing me. If you will, let's bow for prayer. Our gracious and heavenly Father, Lord God, we just ask that you bless our time today. Lord, hide me behind the shadow of the cross, so that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts would be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So, um, the psalm that we read today, that during our Psalter, is a psalm of praise. The psalmist is telling us to sing praises to God. He goes on to tell us to worship with gladness and joy. He reminds us that the Lord is God, in verse 3, the Lord is God and that we are His. Now, I have to um, confess, I think that I gave Chad the wrong uh, gospel lesson, but so we're going to, but I, I'm not sorry that we read that because, I, well, number one, I love that John's uh, gospel, uh, that's the account that we hear. Now, note that John is the one that doesn't give us the birth of Jesus, but he, he starts with creation, and so we're going to talk about that. So, Chad, thank you for setting that up for us. No, no, no worries. It was no, no apologies necessary. I, anyway, it's all good. And, you know, things happen for a reason. We are going to go back and talk about creation. And so that's why um, I'm grateful. I love that. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, is what Chad spoke to us. The Word is referring to, oftentimes we refer to Jesus as the Word. And that just gives us an example of the, the, the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, of being there at the beginning. So if we go back and look at, um, at actually, uh, Genesis, we find in the book that how important we are to the Lord God. It was on day six that God said, uh, this is in Genesis 1, verse 26. I'll be read, I'm going to read uh, Genesis 1, 26, 27, and 31. Uh, verse 26, he says, Let us make mankind in our image, that let us, another reference to the Trinity, the whole, uh, that we have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit there at creation, just like Chad read in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. So in verse 26 it says, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Verse 31, God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, and that was the sixth day. So we just read the scriptures about how he wanted to create mankind in his own image. So I would say that, that we, uh, this shows us how important we are to the Lord God. He uses that verb, created, Three times in that verse 27, he says, so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Anytime we're studying scripture and we see repetition in the sacred scriptures, we can count that that is something uh, that's important. It's emphasizing something. And so here, to me, this says how important we are to the Lord God. He chose to create us. There's a Hebrew name for the Lord God, Elohim, that means the Creator. It can be translated as the Strong One. Say that with me, Elohim, Elohim. Elohim. The Lord God, the Creator, Elohim, made us in His <laughs> image. Now, uh, we studied the Ten Commandments recently, and we know that the first four commandments, one, two, three, and four, talk about uh, God's relationship with man. Uh, and uh, when Jesus was being tested by the Pharisees about which commandment was the greatest, we find that in, Ma in Matthew's Gospel, uh, he, this is what his response was. And we've talked about this before, but he says in Matthew's Gospel, he says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with soul and with all your mind. 
So he's speaking about that first commandment, those first four, that they're all uh, focused on God, man and God's relationship. Then he says, the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. So just to, rem to remind us, that doesn't mean we don't follow, we don't have to uh, follow commandments uh, th uh, three through ten. We Yes, we're going to follow all of them. The first four are about our relationship with God. The last six are about man, our relationship with one another. Now, uh, we also know in John 3.16 uh, how much God loves us. He, for that is, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn. He did. He sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. So, can we agree? We've talked about how God created us. We've talked about how God provided those <laughs> rules so that we could follow, that we could have a relationship with Him. And we just said how much God loves us that He sent His only Son. So, could we agree that that God made us in His image for a relationship with Him? When we look back at our psalm that we uh, read earlier, the psalmist also refers to us as the sheep of his pasture. So if we are his sheep, then that must mean that what? If we're the sheep, then he must be what? Our shepherd. So our, our second gospel reading that I want us to look at uh, in John is John 10. And if you'll turn there with me, John 10. And this speaks about the good shepherd. Uh, we're going to read, I'm going to read 1 through 18 for us. Uh, John 10, 1 through 18. Very truly I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep by the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gate people opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by the name and leads them out. When he has brought, all out, brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger, in fact. They will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever, whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the fullest. Verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The, sheep, the, she, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and, the, and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is, high, he, he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life, not only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I receive from my father. And then if we look at uh, 27 through 30. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is the greater than all. No one can snatch them out of the Father's hand, and I and the Father are one. So this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So when we're talking about the, uh, we, we talk about how the psalmist uh, said that we were the sheep, and so he is uh, our good shepherd. When we dig down into the Gospel of John, of course, we find that Jesus is discussing the good shepherd. Now, shepherding was a common occupation in ancient Israel. Quite often, the flocks consisted of sheep and goats. We've heard that reference before. 
Um, it was the shepherd's responsibility to keep the flock uh, safe. They would pasture the sheep and the goats during the daytime for grazing, and of course they would lead them to water. <clears throat> but then at night they would corral them for safety and shelter. They would gather them into a sheepfold, or what we might call a pen. I thought this is interesting. So it may not have been a formal pen like we might recognize. You know, we, we see uh, cows. Look, we don't see sheep much here, I guess. But cows, and we would see horses, maybe other livestock. But, uh, so we would think of it as a pen with maybe fence posts and, and, uh, and such. But we're, we're not talking about it. It may have not been that uh, organized or that formal. They would gather the sheep at night, of course, for safety. Uh, but it may have been, in my study and I learned it, they may have used a cave. They may have used maybe an abandoned building or even the wall of a building as kind of a support structure. They could have used maybe thorn branches to provide an overhead uh, protection. I guess, you know, maybe you think we talked about the wolves, maybe wolves that might come in or jump down from the, the cave area. So they could have used maybe branches. Uh, for protection, much like we would think of maybe barbed wire. So the shepherd would construct a door at the gate uh, for the passage in and out of the sheepfold pen, also using probably found objects, uh, natural you know, branches, uh, limbs, so forth. That too, uh, may have, they would have used you know, whatever materials they could have found. So, but sometimes the shepherd may have also had to use himself as the gate. He may have had to lay in this in front of the space to keep whatever was trying to get in out. It may have not looked like what we envision a pin or a, uh, that, uh, that safety uh, net, but it provided the same function. It was about safety and shelter. So as well as providing that protection, there was also a relationship between the shepherd and the sheep. Because the sheep depend on the shepherd, they uh, listen to... Uh, they can uh, discern his voice from others, from other voices. And so listen to this little description. This came from the Archaeological Study Bible. It says, A good shepherd cared greatly for his sheep and came to know each one. For their part, the sheep would know and respond to the voice of their shepherd alone. The relationship between shepherd and flock was so tight that it became a metaphor for the relationship of God to his people. Therefore, we're talking about the good shepherd. We are the sheep. He is our good shepherd. So isn't that what we just talked about earlier in, in, in the gospel that we read? So let's revisit that passage just looking back at verses 11, uh, verses 11 and 12. Um, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and scares nothing, uh, cares nothing for the sheep. He says, I, in verse 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. So if we acknowledge uh, the Lord Jesus Christ as the good shepherd as the Lord of our life, then we will recognize his voice and he will know us. The shepherd David explained uh, uh, how he, uh, he had difficulty and hardship. He experienced hardship and grief. So although some of his uh, circumstances were because of some poor choices that he made, God still <coughs> recognized uh, David as a man after his own heart. David reminds us in, of God's faithfulness in the shepherd psalm that we know so well, Psalm 23. Uh, how many times do we say that quite often, um, even at, uh, at uh, celebration of life uh, um, times? So listen to just that verse 4 in the shepherd psalm. He says, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So just like David learned, um, Difficulty can serve as a way of, to deepen our relationship with the Lord. Sometimes we, uh, we go through difficulties. We know that we could go in the room and share, our, share times when, when things were difficult, when we went through trials, when we went through tests. But I would, I would hope that you can all look back now. It's difficult when we're going through those situations. 
But when we look back on our lives, I can certainly see when God was with us uh, through difficult times. Uh, and then the thing that comes from that is when we have a test, we all we can from that uh, that I keep saying opportunity. I know this word opportunity, but from that challenge or from that time, we can share our testimony and how the Good Shepherd heard our voice. We can look back and see how God protected us through difficult situations. We look back at our song. When we look back one more time, he tells us in verse 4, he says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. The psalmist is giving us instruction for praising the Lord Jesus Christ. He's saying that we should come into his presence with thanksgiving. If we are thankful, then we are also grateful. So he's talking about coming into the presence here in our church setting. But can't we be in God's presence in other places as well? Even in our daily life, in our walk, in our quiet times, we can still be in God's presence. It doesn't have to be just in here. I was thinking that um, if we come into his presence uh, to praise his name with a spirit of thankfulness or abide in his presence with gratitude for our many blessings, can't we take that same spirit of thankfulness and gratitude when we leave here we come into this uh, place we come into God's presence uh, thanking him for our blessings for uh, having gratitude can't we take that with us the last gem that the psalmist provides for us in Psalm, the Psalm 100 that we read today with uh, verse 5 he says for the Lord is good and his love endures forever his faithfulness continues through all generations now, I think it was a little bit different translation that we read, but that's okay. It, uh, it's, it's basically the same. His, the Lord is good. His love endures forever. His faithfulness contends, continues through all generations. And we've talked about that last week, about the Hebrew word that speaks about God's unfailing love, hesed. Remember, we talked about hesed is that all-encompassing word. It's attributed to loyalty, faithfulness, goodness, graciousness kindness and love. It's God's steadfast love for us, Hesed. The psalmist's proclamation of the Lord's goodness, we can refer back to uh, the Lord God, the co covenant that he made with Moses that we spoke about a number of weeks ago. It, remember when uh, Moses had gone up into the mountain to receive the commandments, the people were not obedient, they were complaining to Aaron, Aaron made the golden calf, we had all this confusion going on. Moses got mad, and, and then God got mad, and God transferred the ownership. He said, your people, it used to be God said they were his people, God's people. Now he's transferred the ownership to Moses. We had all that transfer of ownership, and Moses, remember, interceded on behalf of the people. He asked God for favor and asked God to please continue to go with them. Uh, and he asked for God's presence to be with them as they continued. If not, he didn't remember. He didn't want to go. And the Lord God said, this is in Exodus 33, he said, I will make all the goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim before you my name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, gracious, gracious and will show mercy on those whom I will show mercy. He goes on to say that he wouldn't be able to see his face, but that he would protect him. So through that, God does uh, provide, say that he will provide, that he will go with them, and he, of course, provided protection and goodness. So through our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us on the cross at Calvary, we can claim that same goodness that we're just speaking of, that the psalmist spoke about, God's unfailing love. We can claim that same goodness uh, for ourselves. If we can't play the shofar, like I did, and probably uh, uh, people wouldn't want me to do that very often, but so if we can't play the shofar, then let's sing a spirit of gratitude, literally and figuratively. Let's sing a spirit of gratitude for our many blessings, taking that spirit into our home, into our workplace, everywhere we go. Jesus even tells us, uh, uh, as recorded by Luke's gospel, he says, whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. Through our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, how can we positively influence others that they too might sing their grateful praise to others so that the Lord Jesus Christ might be glorified? 
How might we lead other sheep to the sheep pen to know the good shepherd so that they can be counted as his sheep as well? All of these things I offer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.